Over the last couple of weeks, I've produced a series of vlogs about this event, the Monaco Energy Boat Challenge. Now, this is not the sort of thing that I normally do publish on the YouTube channel. These are not yachts that are for sale. They're not yachts that are for charter. But I wanted to report back to you about the event because this is a great example of a hugely important institution in the world of yachting, the Monaco Yacht Club, providing fertile ground for new ideas for the future to grow. And we know that the future of yachting has to be a sustainable future. Now, here we have inside the building about 36 companies who all produce something regarding alternative energy for the yachting industry. But outside, we have 450 students from all over the world competing in various classes in the event. Now, at the time of publishing the videos, I didn't know that I would be asked to have the privilege to be the MC at the opening ceremony of this event. I've also been asked to give out some of the prizes at the end. So I've really been able to get an inside view of what goes on here. And I thought the best way we could do this video is by just listening to what some of the exhibitors and some of the students have been up to. So Aya and Shema from yes. Team Sailing Tigers, tell us where you're from, what your boat's about, and why everybody was raving about the presentation that you did at the Tech Talk yesterday. First of all, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Aya Amran, and I'm the integration analyst in the team. And I am currently gra a graduate from, um, of mechanical engineering, and we study in Rochester Institute of Technology. And I'm Shaima, I'm also a mechanical engineer and I am the research and development lead for the team. Uh, we're very happy and excited to be here. Our boat has a different concept from every boat here because we focused on the concept of making it dismantable. And we include that in our presentation, the fact that you can take the boat, dismantle it and literally put it in your carry-on bag and travel with it making shipment, eradicating the hassle of shipment basically and making it super easy and convenient. So usually when you ship your boat is according to your volume, but the way we try to do it is minimize the volume as much as we can so that would decrease the cost, the, also the carbon emission that would be decreased and we try to put things like that into consideration. So where, what country did you fly in from? We came from the United Arab Emirates, Dubai. So you put this in your hand luggage? In the overhead locker. In the in the air, aircraft, yes. <laughs> and what's the uh, what's the propulsion system that you're using? We're using uh, e-propulsion motor, and it comes with two propellers, high pitch and low pitch, and we keep exchanging them between races. And Hello, I am Manav uh, from analyst of Team C Shakti. Uh, we are about 13 students. Actually, we have no uh, prior past experience in this uh, marine architecture kind of events. And this is the first time we are actually participating and we really got a very great experience in it. Uh, we all are uh, young students of doing our second and third year uh, of various different branches of engineering. So we are from Kumaruguru College of Technology, which is located in Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu in India. So. If you look at Coimbatore, it is a landlocked area where we don't have sea and oceans nearby. We had to travel nearly about three to four hours to go to the nearby oceans to at least test our boat or to get any uh, experience in it. So that was a quite challenging part for us. And what's uh, special about the boats? Okay, so we have used aluminium material for our cockpit, which has actually uh, made the boat light in weight. For the propulsion system, uh, we have used uh, uh, lithium ion battery which is powered by the solar panels so we have just uh, manufactured this with a vision of zero pollution and also for the sustainable future uh, the battery actually uh, we had a lot of challenges to bring it from India to Monaco so for that we actually thought of coming to Monaco or France and purchasing it so we actually searched a lot of battery and finally we got a sponsor from Rim Drive Technologies. So thanks to them actually, they helped us a lot. So say who they are, who they are the sponsor? Rim Drive Technologies. Rim Drive? Yeah, from yeah. Netherlands. Fantastic. Yes. Actually, uh, the battery capacity was really good. 
uh, we had endurance in the morning which uh, we had our boat to run for 3 hours continuously so uh, it actually ran for 2 hours 40 minutes which was also powered by solar panel and unfortunately for the last 10 minutes we could not uh, the battery got drained up yeah so we were in the third position and unfortunately we had to come back to sixth position because our battery got drained up do you think you'll be back next year yeah do you enjoy it so this is the first time actually we are participating and we didn't we got a very good experience and exposure to it so we are taking this as a first time experience and we'll come back next year and rock it We are basically replacing propellers of boat by an undulating membrane, an undulating fin. So our first outboard motor, the Fin 5, is a 5 horsepower outboard motor for small boats up to 3 tons. We have no rotating parts, only an undulating membrane. This membrane looks like a, a, a disc. So the disc undulates from the peripheral to the center and propels the fluid from here to here with a Venturi effect. So no risk at all to get injured. Because the Venturi you... effect is like a whirlpool effect, isn't it? Is that what a Venturi effect is? Well, you have a fluid... Because going... I have a wine aerator at home that has a Venturi effect, but I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, yeah, it's... Um... Uh, probably just like that, uh, you, you have a fluid going at a high speed here and the fluid going at low speed is accelerated by uh, this, uh, this fluid. So uh, it creates a, a propulsion uh, to, to the boat without rotating parts. So, Take this boat here that you have in the photograph, what sort of speed would an engine get out of a boat like that? So with a Fin 5, it's uh, for small boats, so you can get at uh, 10 kilometers per hour, uh, maybe five, uh, five knots, yeah. And uh, for bigger uh, motor, we are developing a 150 horsepower, so 150 horsepower, fully electric, 120 kilowatts. And this uh, outboard motor is a concept and we are uh, beginning the development of this one. So it will uh, propulse the boat that will uh, handle the, the, the Olympic uh, flame for Paris uh, 2024. We're Optima Electric Boats. My name's David Kendall, I'm Managing Director. Uh, our first boat is 10 metres, 33 feet. That will be the smallest boat that we build. Um, the hull works very well at that size. It works better and better the bigger the boat gets. So we're looking at 10 metres, probably the next will be 12 metres, where we'll have two double cabins, two heads, more accommodation. Um, 10 metre is more of a sort of luxury day boat, weekender, uh, with a double cabin and with separate heads, but more likely to be used with eight to 10 people on board as a, a luxury day boat. And this is obviously electric? Fully electric, 100% electric. 100% battery powered, so we're not messing with hydrogen. We're you know, not struggling with renewable, um, with fuel sources that we can't find in every harbour. We can find electricity in every harbour we go into. You plug into the shore cable, I suppose. You we could charge overnight on a 16 amp supply, and we're going to see that improved over the next few years, both with superchargers, but even just jump into a 32 amp will give us faster charging. And, and the, on a boat this size, yeah. are you looking at inline shafts or...? or no, the... we're on a 10 metre, we're looking at a single 40 kilowatt rotating pod. What's so it gives us really good manoeuvrability without outboards hanging on the back. So it's all in board, but a rotating steerable pod. On the 12 metre, we'll have two 40 kilowatt drives located in the side hulls, which is something we could not do with a combustion engine because they would not fit in that space. So electrification. Because it's actually like a trimaran hull, isn't it? it? It is a sort of trimaran or a sort of stabilised monohull, um, but it is no wider than a modern monohull. So we can go into conventional harbour or marina berth 
we're not looking to try and find two berths together and pay twice as much to berth the boat. And what sort of performance are you expecting to, to get from this? The 10 metre with one drive will do 16 knots. Um, it will also do 200 miles. Um, the 12 metre twin drives, we expect to do around 20 knots. And we can cruise at any speed between two knots and 20 knots. And the, there's no hump, there's no planing. So it's not like a planing boat where you're either at displacement speeds or you're at planing speeds. We're really comfortable at any speed in between. So. And where, where are you at in terms of, um, are you already in a position to produce these, to sell them, to give a price list, or, or are you still in we're, the development stage? We're just finishing the build of our first 10 metre demonstration boat. Uh, it's been in the water, it's done a sea trial. It's now back in the factory to be finished, painted, trimmed, you know, presentable to the public. That will be in around two months, end of September this year. Um, then, you know, next year we start to look at productionization, how we roll out other boats, how we mass produce this in, in volume. So I really wanted to introduce you to Rory Traher, apart from the fact that we've known each other for a long time. Yep. You also have what I consider to be far and away the most completed looking boat in the, in the whole of the, uh, the event. It's yes. a very, very highly finished yacht. What can you tell me about, about the boat and about Vita as a company? Well, so uh, we were founded four and a half years ago. Um, we develop high performance powertrains and a range of boats from uh, three meter jet ski up to the 10 and a half meter line that we've got here today. And we've also got a seven meter rib. Um, so we're pure electric. We've never been interested in hybrid. We've been super focused on just you know, replacing combustion engines in the marine space with, with full electric. Let me unpackage that a moment. You said that you do electric jet skis. We are doing an electric jet ski. Is yeah. that a product that's already on the market? No, or? it's in development at the moment, but we're certainly hoping to have it in a, in a production ready state by the beginning of next year. And people enjoy jet skis because they're so fast. Yeah. I mean, are you able to deliver that kind of performance with electric? We hope so, yeah. I mean, at, at the moment we've, we've developed the powertrain, we've got it in a test ski. Uh, so we're going to know, we have a clear idea of what the performance is going to be in the, in the next few weeks, actually. It's going oh, to that's the next week. Yeah. And then you said a seven meter rib? Yes. That's quite a big rib, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's got a, it's either got a 60 kilowatt um, battery pack or a 90. So we're doing, you've got two options on that single stern, stern drive and um, I mean you know we've just been on a just done a speed race with the for the Monaco Energy Boat Challenge we're hitting 30 knots and the cruising speed sort of 22 oh, that's so great. you know we're getting quite a lot of performance out of it um, and at cruising speed the range is an you know, hour and a half so we're hoping to you know it's, it's, it's got perfect application as a recreational boat we're also getting a lot of interest from ports and marinas who want to replace their existing outboard boats work boats with a with an electric solution and get the charging infrastructure in as well so so you can just plug it into the shore power normal shore power so, so you can either ac charge at any marina on 16 or 32 amp or we uh, we work with a company called aqua superpower and they're rolling out the first network of marinized dc chargers so that's a 75 kilowatt charger so we can charge our boats in like uh, under an hour compared with probably five and a half to six hours on AC charging. So yeah, it's a and, big, and big improvement. I, was, I had a, a Tesla um, taxi the other day. Yes. He said it can take up to eight hours to, to charge his Tesla. Yeah, on, on, a, on an AC slow charge, a domestic plug, absolutely. But if you go to a Tesla supercharger, you can get, when you first plug in on you know, one A charger, you're getting 800K of range in, you know, in an hour. It's awesome. And then finally, the boat that I think has caught everybody's eye is Lion. What yes. can you tell me about Lion? So Lion's our flagship. When we when we started, we wanted to build the best electric boat ever. And so we, you know, my background's in the yachting industry, super yacht industry particularly. We were very keen to develop the most premium, most powerful electric boat, and that's what we've done with Lion. You know, it's it's unashamedly high end, um, but it's it's absolutely the, the, the use case for the, the best application of, of electric propulsion. That's great. Well, I know that a lot of viewers of the YouTube channel are really interested in you know the future. Every time I do a video about silent yachts, for example, yeah, yeah. there's lots of views. Great. So if you're up for it, maybe we should do a live stream 
one day and let viewers ask you their questions. Yeah, directly. totally. I mean, we can go out on the boat, depending on internet connection. I don't know how it works, the live stream, but um, the boats are based here in Monaco all this summer. If you want to come and have a look, come and have a go, come meet us. Yeah, that'd be, I'd love to do it. That's great. Thanks, Rory. Awesome. Thank you Cheers. very much. Thanks. So I thought we'd finish filming for the day and then Francois from Platypus called me over and said, take a look at this. And it is so extraordinary, I just have to show you. Show me, Francois. So this is a Platypus swordfish. We are a French-based company, Platypus Craft. Uh, we are the first company worldwide to create a boat able to navigate on the water, but also under the water. So just to give you an idea, this is a submarine position. And so you can go up. Or down. <laughs> so this looks crazy, like James Bond, by the way, but in fact, uh, it's real. I mean, this is a concept boat, but uh, we did the first boat that is, has navigated for 75 kilometers, this one, from Monaco to Marseille. So we you did. have run a boat like this? Yes. For 75 kilometers? Yes, under the water. It was just last, last month. I come back, it was one week ago. I was in Marseille, and we just arrived in Marseille one week ago. So yeah, it's very new. The main purpose is that me, I love to be under the water. I love diving, I love the, I love the sea, I love to be in the water. And um, it was 10 years ago, I just realized that uh, no boat is navigating under the water. And me, I just wanted a boat that was like a boat, I could navigate on the water. But also, when I wanted to do that, just to go under the water, like a cab, by the way. You got a car, a normal car, a standard one, and if you want, you switch, you push a button, and you transform in a cab, and you enjoy the sun. I wanted to enjoy, to enjoy the diving uh, under the water, that's it. So two questions, well, I've got loads of questions, but yeah, the, first, the first one that comes to mind, I see hydrogen technology. It is, yeah. So is it a hydrogen fuel cell? Is that how the proportion It's fuel works? cells, yeah, definitely. In fact, we're going to use electric engine uh, with a big pack of battery. The battery are going to be on the pod in the middle in order to you know, have a good balance. And uh, yeah, in order to, 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 to have more range, we're going to use some fuel cell hydrogen power. Yeah. So what's the top speed with this up and what's the top speed with it down, which must be a lot less? Of course, it's not the same. Yeah, you're right. Um, we target minimum 25 knots on the surface. In order, you have to have a competitive boat, even with standard boat. And uh, under the water, we target seven knots. That's enough, by the way. And what, um, what sort of safety measures are you going to take so that some lunatic doesn't go over a hidden rock and hit this? Because all of a sudden your draft has gone huge. Uh. Yeah, um, well, you can imagine that technically we had a lot of issue to face and this is done so we can talk for that for hours and we're getting regulation on safety reason. Uh, we work a lot, you know, so under the water, the cockpit, you, you see there, of course, the cockpit is going to be closed, so it's totally dry. It's even going to be air conditioned, by the way, under the water. You can smoke a cigar and have a glass of wine if you want to. Wow. Uh, you can sleep under the water, you can eat under the water. Ah, it's crazy, I know. And then uh, at the back, you get the pilot, and the pilot has, is going to have like a dashboard, like a Tesla, under the water, dry, of course. And uh, he's going to watch everything happening under the surface, so he's going to have everything like radar, uh, cameras under the water, and cameras also here on the roof in order to see the boat on the surface, because you can imagine, you know, you're the pilot under the water, you need to see, of course, what's happening on the surface. So we call this a digital periscope, by the way, like a submarine. Yeah. So under the water, the pilot can see what is happening under the water, of course, but also on the water. I hope that video went some way to reflecting what an amazing event the Energy Boat Challenge is, although I suspect that actually it was 10 times more vibrant in reality than I was able to really show on the video. Especially I'm impressed with the fact that a big institution like the Monaco Yacht Club that could so easily rest on its laurels and still get lots of members, nonetheless they're proactive in trying to energize and motivate people to improve yachting as an industry. It really is an incredible event. 
It's not the kind of content that I usually cover on this channel, to be perfectly honest. The usual kind of content, as you know, is walkthrough videos of yachts. And we filmed the Energy Boat Challenge just a couple of days after returning from Turkey, where we filmed an amazing yacht called Dilnisin. If you've seen the video that I did of Larima, which now has nearly 700,000 views, then you'll also love the latest video of Dilnisin, because it's a very similar designed yacht, but with some distinct differences. We'll be publishing that on this channel on Saturday, so make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss it.